Good. Good. Hi, everyone. It's so great to be here. I'm seeing so many people from so many places around the world. So thanks for saying hi from there and hi from there. This is an exciting session that we are holding as far as networking. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Hilal Wilbrenner. I'm the Managing Director at TechTribe Tel Aviv. And this is a very exciting day for me because the reason I joined TechStars to start with is the incredible network we had at TechStars and many other things. And today we have here with us some very, very international and special guests to tell you a little bit about the network, how to build companies, and what we can really do during these really exciting times, but difficult times that are happening, and why it is that I feel that there is a storm going on outside and somewhere very warm and protected exercise here to help you. So today with me on the line uh, is of course Ramsey, uh, a very dear friend of mine, uh, the network catalyst for EMEA. And today, uh, although I have to say that one of the reasons I joined Textrise was because I was always an entrepreneur. I raised over $40 million in my life, had three companies, IPO in my companies, but I never felt as protected uh, and uh, with a great network as I do today with the Textrise Network. So the main thing I'm going to be telling you about what we can do and what tools that today is session is really about getting to know you, getting some of your answers, uh, and letting you know a little bit about the tools we have to give you and for some success stories from uh, both a B2B and B2C perspective. So it's so great to be here. I'm seeing some familiar faces and names, and I'm also seeing people from India, from Munich, from Berlin, from Israel, Montenegro. Couldn't be more happy to see all these people here. So I'm going to hand over first to Ramsey, my dear friend. Thank you so much for taking the time to be here, not only for me, but also for the founders and the communities. And such a dear friend of Techstar Tel Aviv, which will start its first session, its real program in uh, on the 7th of June, after we've had some four Barclays programs here in Tel Aviv. And uh, Ramsey did visit Tel Aviv, see how, um, popular and what it is, why it is that we call it Startup Nation here, and all the adrenaline, the innovation, the creativity, and the founders that are going on here. And I think he was deeply impressed, and maybe this is the reason he decided to spend some time with us uh, here today to understand the community and also help bridge between the Israeli founders in Tel Aviv to the founders around the world and see how we can help. Because one of the biggest values we have at Texas is, of course, the founder first, give first uh, value. Uh, so thank you again so much for being here. And I hand it over to you, uh, Randy. Thank you very much, Hill. I really appreciate that warm introduction and great context setting for the conversations today. Uh, as Hilla mentioned, my name is Ramsey Ismail. I'm the network catalyst for Techstars, uh, EMEA, Europe, Middle East, and Africa. What the net catalyst is for Techstars is somebody who bridges the gap between organizations, roles, and geographies for the Techstars network online and offline, helping support our founders, our mentors, our corporate partners, and, uh, and alumni uh, in all sorts of fashion, from fundraising to support to mental health, to all types of things that are related to the entrepreneurial journey. And uh, my own entrepreneurial journey started back in 2013, 2012, as the founder and CEO of a company called Venuable.com. I went to the Lighthouse Labs Accelerator Program in Richmond, Virginia, which ACE also an alumni of. And back then, entrepreneurship for us was a bit different. It was, uh, it was still fresh. The sense of community and kind of grassroots uh, creatorship was really taking off. I realized we didn't have all the resources around us that needed. Uh, and for me, after failing in my own entrepreneurial journey and having met ACE early on in my college life, uh, we ended up being both founders and eventually he ended up being a tech startup entrepreneur and the tech startup employee, both with the mission of helping entrepreneurs in trying to build and world and solve the world's problems. With that being said, I have two other guests with me as well, Esther and uh, Ace, who will introduce themselves and their entrepreneurial journeys. And then from there, I will jump into a few questions. Feel free to tap the ask a question button at the bottom right hand. If you have any uh, interest to ask the folks what their 
experience is like being part of the Tesla's network, being an entrepreneur, going into new cities, uh, and anything else in that regard. With that being said, Esther, I will give the floor to you. Thanks, Ramsey. Um, hi, I'm Esther. I am the Senior Network Engagement Manager uh, working in the Industry Solutions team on te at Techstars. It's a really long title, and it's a really complicated role. <laughs> There's a lot of things that I do in, on my team. Um, mostly, I'd like to say my favorite part of the job is making um, meaningful connections between our corporate partners and our um, Techstars alumni. And so that's kind of one, of one part of my job. The other part is um, I do I, I do a industry lead where I, I am currently writing a fintech trend report, and so that's kind of to understand and bring the voice of all of the TechStars network um, together. And then another part is that I, I write a lot of the curriculum and modules for these corporate facing type of engagements to help them understand and better um, equip themselves to um, get exposure to POC opportunities, so that it leads to M and A investment and um, commercial strategic partnerships, that kind of the world. So that's a, a bit of a high level summary of my job currently. Um, before this job at Techstars, I was also a business associate at the IoT program in 2017. So I also know the accelerator world a little bit. Prior to that, my experience comes from uh, about a decade in the real estate sector doing the legal and finance um, of, of that sector. And that led me to my first um, company when the market crashed around the legal tech. Started off as a social impact project that I just wanted to help the average Joes of the world understand how to get modification quickly, just point them to one or two or three of the pages of the loan docs, the 270 page average loan doc uh, of the, of the US. Um, to say, hey, you might want to look at this clause and you might want to understand what this is saying because they were so there were a lot of instances where the average Americans can't read through all of that and make sense of all the legal jargon and so that they are just signing away their lives. They're losing their homes, but they're getting tacked on 250K uh, for, for nothing. And so things like that, I wanted to save them um, from, from that. That turned into a company, um, gained traction and ended up getting sold. Uh, the other two fintech companies that I managed um, and I founded was in retail and hospitality around the POS um, UI UX focus. Nobody was doing UI UX. We didn't even know what UI UX meant at the time. That term didn't exist. It wasn't cool at all. This is like back in 2010 um, in LA. So all of the hard um, things that we had no community, we had no network, uh, none of those things, but we still were able to gain some traction um, through and through uh, just you know, being brave and kind of asking. Then I made my move over to New York because I hadn't gone to college uh, until I was in my late 20s. And so that transition happened. I did that whole uh, community building and network building all over again. I think that's like the area where might be most relevant to you all and kind of um, sharing my experiences from that era might be really helpful. So that kind of trans transitions nicely into um, my Techstars journey. So um, that is a little bit about me and I'll pass it over to Ace. Hey, thanks, Esther, uh, Ramsey. Uh, I appreciate you guys having me. Um, Esther, it just occurred to me that we met in 2017 um, at IoT. Did we? Uh, we did. How did we you did. forget so, my face? I didn't forget your face. <laughs> I forgot where I met you is what happened. That's, uh, yeah, no, that That's makes awesome. total sense. So Jenny was my MD for Barclays um, the year right. prior. So we did uh, Barclays 2016. Um, and so I hung out with Alex and the Pillar right. crew. And yeah, yep, yep, yep. Um, I love it. See, that is the power of the network right there. Awesome. Um, so um, for everybody, my name's Ace Callwood. Um, I wear a couple hats, but I think the the current one, I am uh, Ramsey's counterpart, kind of. I'm the network catalyst at VCU Ventures. So Ramsey and I's alma mater uh, here in Richmond, Virginia. So I'm, uh, I'm calling from across the pond. Um, uh, at, uh, so Network Catalyst at our Ventures Group, and then I'm the Director of Communications for the Health Innovation Consortium, um, which is effectively an innovation platform very similar to uh, some of the corporate programs and partnerships that Techstars builds across the world. Um, we have built a healthcare and health specific uh, series of programming. We have our own version of an accelerator here and then multiple corporate partners. So Esther, Esther probably closest to IoT with multiple corporates involved in one program. Um, we've built a collective of health systems, starting with VCU Health, um, our, our health system here in Richmond. Um, so I'm, I'm an accidental healthcare guy. Um, my experience goes back to the entrepreneurship program that Ramsey and I both came out of. So a degree in entrepreneurship, 
I started my first company in school and failed spectacularly. Um, I got that out of the way real early. I can check that off the list. Um, and then uh, my, my partner and I promised ourselves we'd never build another company we couldn't actually execute on. You know, don't outsource your core competency was one of those really good lessons. Um, so he taught himself how to code. I started digging into comms and we built Coffitivity, uh, which is a web app that plays the ambient sounds of a coffee shop. Um, we launched that in 2013. We were one of Times top 50 sites of the year when we launched and we're at 14 or 15 million folks globally now who use that, uh, that property. Um, of course, that wasn't enough. And so we, we talked to our audience there, found out everybody was self-employed um, and ended up building a company called Painless 1099, which is where we got involved with both Lighthouse Labs, the accelerator here that Ramsey mentioned, and uh, Techstars, uh, the Barclays program in New York City, which we did in 2016, I believe the fall. Um, so Painless 1099 was a smart bank account for helping uh, self-employed independent contractors manage um, their taxes at first, and that turned into several corporate partnerships with MetLife and Goldman Sachs and PwC uh, to facilitate benefits across the world um, for that cohort. Um, so I will we'll talk about some of those corporate connections that came out of the Techstars network in a few, um, but that kind of brings us to current. And so a couple companies under the belt, uh, now back in the university system again, um, teaching, running our pre-accelerator, and then uh, you know jamming on healthcare, which is pretty relevant through COVID-19. Super interesting stuff. Thank you everybody for that background. Hilla, let's kick it off to you. And uh, as you begin to look for entrepreneurs coming to the Texas Tel Aviv program, uh, the network value add becomes a very big part of the conversation. Now, how, are, how do you frame the network to entrepreneurs coming into the, the accelerator program? And, uh, and how do you kind of set the context for them to be able to leverage it? That's an excellent question, Ramsey. So actually, when um, I see entrepreneurs today, I can't believe that when I started, one of my biggest fears was that all the time mm -hmm. I felt very alone. I didn't know where to start, all right? So there were not enough programs, not enough uh, other serial entrepreneurs. Uh, you know, I, I felt very alone. I didn't know where to start. I didn't know where there was a playbook and how I could even start raising money. And when I see founders today, one of the things I say to them is that you have the asset. First of all, you got into Techstars, which is, you know, today they say uh, it's uh, easier to get into Harvard than it is to get into Techstars. So, you know, Techstars alumni, that means you went through a very hard selection process. And now people on the chat here with us are all people that are alumni, mentors and investors and MDs around the world, more than uh, 50 MDs that have all been serial entrepreneurs, and all of them are here to help you. So when I see an entrepreneur today, I said to them, all you need to know is Texas is like a buffet. Come to Texas and get whatever you need from that buffet because we can't give you everything. We put everything out on the table, and you need to kind of reach out. And when I see entrepreneurs, I say to them, network, network, and network, because at the end, it's all about people. So that's kind of my two cents on Sorry, going back, uh, thank you for that, Hilla. Ace, jumping back to you real quickly, remembering our days back in university, I remember uh, we always talked about 80% of the effort is just showing up, right? It's just kind of like putting your pants on, going to the gym, right? Going to that event, being at, at that thing, whatever it may be. What is the value of, of being present and being intentional uh, when you're out in the world trying to solve a problem uh, and get this help from others as well, it's always necessary. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I when I think about the intentionality, I I will borrow a phrase from uh, Tommy Nicholas, who's also a TechStars founder. Um, we started a company prior to his TechStars experience, but those guys are crushing it in New York uh, at Alloy. Tommy, Tommy, and I have talked regularly about why we build things, why we build companies, why we connect with other people, and what he says is the goal is not wasting your life, right? Like the goal is not wasting your life. Um, and that's that's a, a maybe pointed way to say that, but I think poignant at the same time, right? Like what we're trying to do is is do the heavy lifting, the legwork, and that happens in customer development and being intentional about asking the right questions in the same way it happens in, in increasing and improving our network and relationships. And like if the intentionality and the, the legwork that is requisite to build solid relationships that move you and your effort and your company forward. Um, you know, we're we're not doing the right work, and we're we're not 
we're not putting the effort in that we need. And so to, to your question very simply, um, the intentionality of not only making connections, but nurturing them, growing them, and ultimately providing value to those connections rather than just taking all the time. You know, that's why the ethos of Techstars is give first. Um, can you help people? And, you know, Gary Vaynerchuk has talked about that too, right? Like the jab, jab, hook. It's give more than you take, but when you make that ask, you know that the relationship is strong enough to support it. Um, that, that I think, is the intentionality and the core of building a network. I just uh, want to add to that something really, really important. When I joined Techstars, I wasn't really sure how a network can work like this because I knew that it started in Colorado and grew to the U.S. and the brand was very strong. But we're having now uh, an AMA session, which is an international one, but focused on EMEA. And here around our uh, geography, there is exceptional founders, investors, and mentors uh, that are all uh, local and want to help each other. And this is an exceptional time. Everybody's very worried about this time and how difficult it is to be a startup or an entrepreneur during COVID-19. But this is an exceptional time. This is why we're having this session to actually create your network because your connections today are not transactional. And this is why I'm adding and so agree to Ace's point. The relationships today are relationships that you are making today in order to potentially use them in the future. Potentially, they will help you raise money, create connections, corporate, etc. So I think the exciting thing about this uh, AMS session also, I'm seeing here people from all around the world, all here to help each other with nothing that they can really get in return, just help, just give first, which is everything that we kind of experience at the And I'll build up on that a little bit, um, if I can. Um, I think there's a little bit of a tactical tip on, you know, when you engage with somebody um, for the first time, like Killa mentioned, it is about the relationship. And like Ace mentioned, it, it's, you know, to getting that relationship to the point where you know that it's solid enough that the ask will come through. And so in my experience, it's always been um, really successful in kind of approaching that relationship in a, on a very human level. And there are things and ways that you can say, but on the tone and the different way that you phrase that phrase or how you say it, how your body language speaks, it completely comes across differently for the other person. And so not just to like, not just saying to just say things or not just agreeing to be like agreeing, actually pay attention to what they're saying and really take interest in what they are going through on a day to day. Because there are people in your network also, you know, um, Gift First is that, you know, obviously the ethos here. So that's my point um, to kind of understand who is in your network that you can help or just connect to. And as you continue to do that, it becomes like built into the lifestyle that you are living and the types of conversations you are having rather than this being like a type of like a hard homework you have to do it just comes up will start to come off naturally at some point i esther i'll, I'll touch on that really briefly i think you nailed it right like the I, I see so often we get into networking mode right and we're like in this box um and i see the same with you know demo day which is why we we coach folks towards simply having a conversation because you're the expert you know we talk to people every day so that's our family our spouses significant others friends um but when we start talking to people professionally we we freak out and you know short circuit sometimes and like what i would encourage is that the the process of networking and some of the tips and tricks the, the tactical stuff that actually just shared is real um, at the end of the day we're having a conversation with somebody else who's also trying to figure it out um, you know, and, and, or has figured it out and is adamant about being able to share that experience with you. Um, so either way, we're kind of coming at it either as the mentor or the mentee or peers, you know, is simply having a conversation and shooting it straight with people is the best way to build a relationship. And it's like, look, I, I don't have it all figured out. You know, I, I failed at the company I went through, uh, with tech stars, um, but there's still value there. And I think being able to share that candidly and transparently is the best way to build a relationship. For sure, I think those gems that you get from meeting people, being sincere and authentic, really kind of begin to uh, compound very quickly. Uh, Ace, let's talk about kind of meeting people uh, from different parts of the world. Also, Esther is looking to speak on this. You you and I started as business, business students, but eventually ended up in technology and design, right? Some people will feel intimidated to kind of go from one space to another and be able to feel 
comfortable connecting with folks from the design world, from the technology world, from the finance world, whatever it may be. Uh, what are ways people can kind of get past themselves uh, and just connecting uh, beyond just having a good conversation? You know, are there other tactics, other tips for somebody in the business world or a designer to, to network or engineers who are typically shy to kind of engage others? What have you seen as uh, best practices? Yeah, I, for me, it would, it would, if I, if I could distill it to one kind of core thought, it would be go to where the people you want to connect with are. And, and I'll, I'll maybe clarify that a little bit. That's not show up at the networking event, although you should be doing that also. Um, but I think a lot of the apprehension of changing or transitioning into a different environment is not knowing the, the just baseline of information that uh, your new peers probably have. Um, so for instance, here's a really practical example. Like when I was starting to figure out technology and and get into the tech entrepreneurship world, um, you know, I, I jumped into uh, Hacker News, right? Like pre-Product Hunt, um, before people were launching things on Product Hunt, it was just Hacker News and you just read threads all the time. Um, and at some point you, you get your feet under you and then you feel comfortable going out to have a, a conversation with somebody. Um, you know, I think so often we don't do the thing, i.e. go to networking events, introduce ourselves to people because we think we're going to sound stupid. Um, and like, I have size 14 feet. I put my foot in my mouth regularly. Like, I don't need any help sounding stupid. I do it on my own. Um, but, you know, having some modicum of understanding of an industry, I think because we're in the internet age and have all this information at our fingertips, we can get a baseline. So we're at least comfortable having some, some you know, high level conversations. And over time, that experience, we will get more granular into the network and start connecting with more people. So I would say start with the information. You'll you'll end up meeting the right people through that experience. Uh, Rams, Go ahead, Ella. Yeah. Uh, can I ask you a question? Please. Yeah. So I want to, I mean, I see a lot of entrepreneurs here from all around the world. And they were looking at us to see what kind of tools we give them to connect. For example, now I see that some of my founders are connecting with others and posting their LinkedIn and possibly they're going to connect. But what is it that you recommend them to do, especially during these times? And what kind of tools that you give them to actually network with each other? Yeah, so, so we'll speak right now um, in the perspective of a tech stars entrepreneur and alumni, uh, those who are in the network. Uh, and, and at that point, the access gates become really available to you. It's really up to your imagination. Uh, what you'll hear from a lot of people is that tech stars is the network to help entrepreneurs succeed, right? What you won't hear is how to best tap into that, right? I think every program teaches it differently. Every individual puts the networking very differently. Everybody's mission uh, in connecting is also a bit different. For tech stars, we do things a bit, uh, try to democratize the ability to access talent, uh, advice, support, even capital at times. And we do it through our offline events, right? Typically, which is a bit more uh, restricted now because of the environment, but things like our, our happy hours, our staff con events, our demo days, were ways to get people together of different uh, parts of the ecosystem to celebrate entrepreneurship, to celebrate these founders that, that come to the program. Uh, but now in this virtual environment, the Techstars Connect platform, uh, things like personal brand building, things like signaling, uh, right? Kind of putting the Techstars name on top of your LinkedIn so people know when you add them that you're part of this class or that class. Uh, kind of wearing the Techstars badge proudly online uh, and offline, you know, uh, having heard stories of amazing interactions with people who wear the Techstars hoodie. Uh, can give uh, people the kind of sense of connectivity and affinity that comes with being from a similar neighborhood or same university. If people know that you're, you're part of the TechStars network, they're more than willing to always kind of give you time and, and converse. But I think knowing how to tap into it is also very, very different. If you're in parts of the world where you're not an entrepreneurial hub, you know, having re remote access, Zoom, building content and kind of creating a presence that people can explore is very, very critical. Uh, and Esther has seen this a lot as well. Maybe Esther can speak on her experience on how entrepreneurs come in and 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 seek your advice in connecting further. Yeah, so um, I'm I'm gonna kind of loop back into there, but I want to go back and touch on the original question that you had asked. I had one thing that I wanted to add on top of Ace's um, great comments. 
um, he mentioned a lot about like you know going to and showing up on network you know events and like how you tactically go about that. But I wanted to also mention that there is the world outside of networking events that you can definitely you know ask for virtual coffees and you know have some engineered serendipity, right? So just. Asking for these type of connections on a daily can really result into some amazing conversations. I experience things all the time. Um, and to answer your question, Ramsey, I've seen a lot of great Techstars alumni um, that get really connected well if they do reach out themselves. So to like personally for me, because I work at Techstars, there are a lot of Techstars alumni that want to connect with me and they just leave me a note. Some just connect with me and they don't do anything. Um, but it's also, it's just most effective. I think if you just leave a drop a note and I had recent one experience that I had very recently that I'll share with you is he, um, he he's a software engineer uh, that it turned into a founder. Um, recently just made a connection on LinkedIn and dropped me a note and I said, hey Esther, I'm a Techstars founder, just wanted to connect with you. I don't have any asks right now or any anything that I kind of need or want, but um, can, is, it, is it okay if I do in the future reach out to you? And I said, yeah, for sure. But it turns out that what he was doing in his company is something I needed <laughs> from my own job and something I knew internally at Techstars that, is, that was something that was of, of a need. So I asked him actually to set up a quick um, 30 minute conversation and that kind of went that way. So um, these are opportunities that are out there and unless you kind of reach out into your own and make that effort, um, it's a total number game, numbers game in my opinion. If you look at, if you're like a numbers person like me, just keep doing, you know, however many. And we are a, uh, we are a creature of habit and so that becomes a natural thing for us and it just becomes kind of what we do on the daily. And one or two of those things, if they come back as a great connection that leads to another great connection, it'll just spill over and um, you'll have more than enough um, on your plate to, to kind of carry. So I hope that's helpful. Very much. Uh, now jumping a bit topics into diversity of network. Uh, I think this is something that we also are very interested in going from one industry to another, one school, one geography to another. Uh, describe to us what it means to be diverse in your network. Uh, from background, skill sets, geography, experience. You know, how, what does the word diversity resonate with you when you define network? Hilla, or Ace can jump in as well. Please. Yeah, I'll, I'll jump in um, only because I, I, I live in this world. So part of, part of my work, uh, I'm a senior facilitator uh, for a diversity and inclusion firm. Um, so again, I said I wear many hats. That is one of them I get to think about. Um, humans right and when we consider diversity we talk a lot about in the in the kind of academic world diversity wheel and all of the influences that got you to where you are but the reality is um you know we talk about diversity as a, a skin color thing or an ethnicity thing and, and the reality is you know uh, your schooling your background your parents um all of the things that go into diversity you know get us to a place where we bring unique value to the table and i think if we aggregate some really talented people with different backgrounds. We, we move away from groupthink and we move toward um, having diversity of thought, which ultimately creates some friction on the front end. I won't, I won't pretend it doesn't, right? There's some friction <laughs> on the front end because you've got to debate the merits of different ideas. Um, but ultimately you get to the best idea and by the numbers, uh, you know, Esther, you'll appreciate this as a numbers person, um, you know, that by the numbers, having a diverse team and a collective of people in a network ultimately improves your bottom line, uh, often substantially. Um, so it's not just a check mark gold star, you've checked the diversity box as much as you're doing some tangible good for your company um, and your investors and, and the rest of your network. Um, so I think being intentional about that's important. For sure. uh, I'll give you the diversity in terms of uh, investors. So whenever I raise money, I'm, I'm very active in the female founders arena and uh, it's a great passion of mine. And of course, everything that has to do with diversity and inclusion is of interest to me. But as a female founder, I was always alone in the room. There was always men around me. And I started thinking what it is and how, why is it difficult to get more female entrepreneurs and more female investors why is it that we're 51 percent of the population uh and yet we're underrepresented in so many um places 
And I think at TechStars we're doing a, a very, we are making a lot of effort to balance that out. And I ask all the founders that are here to actually diversify their network. Because the more they diversify their network, the better and, and better we get as a network. And that means that investors, you know, a lot of research has been done about how you invest in people that are more like you. That you can sit, you know, for a beer with uh, or enjoy the same kind of conversations. And there is a big bias for investors like ourselves as managing directors to sometimes invest in people that are like us. And we need to, as a natural bias, and we need to fight that bias and actually improve statistics. And if there's one thing I want you guys to take away from this call is that you need to diversify your network so that you can get better results and that you can reach places. When you go out and meet people that are not like you, better things will happen to you. If you employ people that are not exactly like you, not the same skin color, not the same uh, gender, everything you know a lot of research has been done about this your company will become better your investment opportunities will become better everything that you know uh, about this world will be a little better and this COVID-19 provides us with an opportunity for that it provides us with an opportunity to start with a clean slate and say now we're not having a bias anymore we're just going out there and rebuilding and creating something from scratch so I ask you to do that I'll kind of um, touch on a lot of these things, but I kind of want to, you know, uh, wrap it into something that really resonated with me. Um, I think networking altogether just kind of comes down to relating with different types of people, and there's so many different types of people out there. And so I think by diversifying our network, we diversify our knowledge and where, what type of opinions and different type of like perspective that is brought into my knowledge base. And so I've experienced this through um, one of my brilliant um, strategic designers um, that I have a friend for, and I bounce my ideas off of her often just because she has such a different take on how I am looking at this problem. She has many different lenses that I don't have because she's had like this 15 years of career in, in that kind of a sector. And so I think that was you know something that was really helpful and really tangible that I can do. Just look in your own like immediate network and your immediate close friends and see, understand like who is different than you um, and who is you know who's kind of on a different path of um, kind of you know like role. Um, and kind of use it, not use that leverage that as as kind of how you diversify your knowledge. And secondly, like you know, to Hill's point, um, there is a lot of these. Um, you know, I, I'm, I also live in this world. I'm I'm a minority, and I'm you know a woman of color as well. And I was a founder, um, kind of going through all of that. And I had age to um, actually be even worse. I was in my early twenties trying to do this. They're like, you look like a child. Does your mom know you're here? Like, you know, these kind of comments I actually heard on a daily. And so um, as I had, you know, as I got really comfortable, um, I got uncomfortable with, I mean, I got comfortable with being uncomfortable. And I was really uncomfortable hanging out with like people my dad's age. But later I got really comfortable doing that. And so I got really comfortable being good in a room. And so all of these folks taught, like took curiosity of me because I was, you know, leveled up with these guys, these folks who are like mid forties, mid fifties, holding my own in those conversations. We're like, who is this kid? And so, like, it kind of um, became a FOMO um, rather than like me trying to validate myself or you know anything like that. So I use that advantage because I stick out anywhere that I go. Um, I live in currently in Berlin right now. I stick out. People look at me like I'm a monkey sometimes when I when I walk down the street. This is true. Um, but there are ways that you can use your, you know, um, disadvantage into your advantage. And it, it, I think it comes by diversifying your knowledge and so that you understand different types of culture as well. That's a whole nother thing that I can get into, but I'll pass it over to Ramsey for just now. No, for sure. I think the, the cultural part of it is something that I've begun to be very much more in tune to. Uh, because as I've moved from Richmond, Virginia, which was the Confederate capital of the US at some point, to Dubai, back to New York, back to Berlin, you realize that the nuances of communication uh, become very, very much uh, noticeable. Uh, when companies pitch, when investors introduce themselves, 
when talent wants to connect with you, they do it differently in different parts of the world. And I think for me, it's built a, a high level of empathy and understanding for people, but also allows me the ability to not uh, use my first judgment uh, as, as, a, as a basis for, for moving forward. Because I think a lot of what we're, we're trained to do is to put people in boxes based on their schooling, their education, their background. Uh, and when you get past that dynamic and, and get to know people for who they are, you get to really understand the richer stories. Uh, and that authentic connection becomes much more apparent. And then from there, the cherry on top becomes that, oh, they also happen to be a VC. They also happen to be a product person. They also happen to be a CTO and you're hiring an engineer. Uh, and I think one of the, the beautiful things is that allowing yourself to be open to serendipity uh, and uh, kind of mani manifesting that by being intentional is also very, very helpful. Well, uh, can we go back to you and, 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 and to the entrepreneurs that are coming into the program? Because I think this is also meant to be a bit of a toolkit. What is your first task for them? Uh, or what is, your, what is the first moment that you see when founders say, wow, this, is, this network is really real? You know, like, what is it that they interact with or experience that gives them that feeling? Maybe Ace, you kind of do the same thing as well. And Esther, from your experience being part of the IoT program and meeting all that, that New York network, kind of what was the first wow moment uh, of that experience? I hope it's now, maybe. No? <laughs> <laughs> no, I hope uh, I hope when they see so many people connecting with them, and hopefully when they want to start fundraising uh, towards the end of the the program, like the third month when we do a lot of fundraising, and when I was a young entrepreneur, uh, I really didn't know where to start. So the the tip I have for them is use the network in that find alumni that have fundraised in the same sectors. Mm. Find them, approach them, ask them, talk to them, ask them what the investment investors they met. Uh, use the connect tools and actually uh, create your pipeline using your network. And that's my biggest wow takeaway because I saw some uh, alumni from the last classes. They actually connected with alumni within, like in the states, in London, in Berlin, and actually yep. fundraised. And when they fundraise using our network, there is no better feeling. So my first tip to them is like, reach out, ask them, ask them the bad, the you know, and, and, and the ugly, and everything there is about it, and just create a business plan and your pipeline based on what they say. Amazing. Yeah, I think me, but I mean, I was gonna say, uh, for me, my first experience with the network was back in 2013. I had just uh, been a failed entrepreneur of a company called Venuable.com. I went to my house labs. And I MD at the time took me to a global accelerator network conference, the GAN conference in Venice Beach. Uh, and I had met some guy named David Cohen who was chatting with us about really interesting things. And I was like, who is this guy? Mm -hmm. uh, she got to him and followed up. And eventually he ended up being the person that now is my ultimate boss, a tech star. CEO type cards. Uh, but it was at that moment that kind of this wild entrepreneur was able to meet somebody of that stature, such an intimate conversation at the very level. That really made me realize that network is not intimidating, right? It is about who you connect with, and it's really about the authenticity of it, and it's, and it's real. Uh, the other part is me meeting the owners of AB InBev and the Prime Minister of Dubai as they were mentors in, in, in tech stars, which is another wow moment, but uh, I'll let you guys share that as well. Hello, can you do mind? I think. Sorry. Go ahead. Sorry. Oh, so, <laughs> um, I'll I'll answer the question that you um, asked before in regards to what I saw in the IoT program. Um, I saw a lot of folks underutilizing um, what is what is given from TechStars program teams, and this is what I mean. Um, as an associate there, you're contracted for three months. So at the end of three months, you are kind of tossed back out to the world and you have to find your next gig. So as you are giving you know, back to the program, you are also looking for different opportunities. And so what I did every time we had some kind of a mentor um, coming, you know, mentor like weekend, mentor madness weekend, like investor, whoever was coming in, I did a lot of research on who 
was on the list and who is relevant for me to talk to and created opportunities myself. I asked the ND, I, I, I nudged the PMs and you know, I, I nudged the people who were around that person. I, I went through, I rated their LinkedIn, um, understood who was like connected to those folks and make sure that I can get introductions to that person so that maybe I can grab a virtual coffee and things like that. So um, I think my one liner can be your homework and use everything that you can to empower yourself to make that, you know, forge that relationship um, at any given point in time. So it could just be, you know, it, it can be a list of, like Hilla said, um, a lot of the folks who've raised around in your in, in your like field that should land in your investor list. I have a list for literally everything, and this is just me. Um, but you know, you can you can use this as a as a tool to start a list for your investors, start a list for your customers, start a list for your mentors, start a list for your advisors. The the most ideal board advisors you want to be on here. Start a list of anything that you want, and then just kind of going down there and asking. This is another thing that I didn't see is I sat in a lot of these mentor madness meetings. Meetings. And what I did not hear from the founders was after they, they thanked them for the time, no one asked them, is there anyone in your network that I should be talking to that you thought about? Um, really awesome mentors already give you that contact, but you should you know, further ask, I think you, I heard you say X, Y, and Z, these three people I need to connect to. Is there anybody else that I can, you know, um, I can connect to or, or you're thinking about um, as you were talking and having a conversation with me? And reach out to them, like, you know, during the program, after the program, hey, it was great being, you know, to have you as a mentor. Um, this is kind of how, give them a short update on all your, on your company. And based on that, is there, is there what you're seeing here that I should, you know, maybe connect with somebody else within your corporate, within your network, within your or XYZ, whatever that may be. So um, don't be afraid to ask. And ask is the first thing that you can do uh, to open up that gate and for them to like reach back. And the, the worst thing that can happen is for them to say no. And if you don't ask, it's already a no anyway. So what is the difference? <laughs> so it just kind of get comfortable with getting that no. And a lot of the no's will end up to that one yes that will open up the floodgates of everything that you need. So I will just keep at it. Tenacity is what makes the entrepreneur successful. I really believe in that. And I know a lot of entrepreneurs are successful because of tenacity. And so just don't give up and keep on doing what you're doing and do your homework and reach out constantly. Mic drop if we, there was one. <laughs> All right. Uh, 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 hey, close the uh, for us, please. Yeah, yeah. So I, I think um, Hill and Esther just crushed it on on some some thoughts about being tactical and practical. Um, I like something Esther said. I think two responses ago, uh, which is something I say to my teams regularly. We've got to be um, comfortably uncomfortable, right? Um, so that idea of putting yourself in situations that feel out of the ordinary is the only way to get to a place where you can thrive in those scenarios. Um, so, you know, being intentional about being comfortably uncomfortable, something I say often, and Esther, I love that you, you phrased it that way as well. Um, I think what might be helpful perhaps is uh, what I didn't do well um, in Techstars. Um, and that, that had everything to do with network as well. I think my perception coming in, having seen YC demo days and Techstars demo day is, you know, you you do really well through the program, like you get in the program and you're good. And then you, you like hang out during the program and then you go to demo day and you tell this awesome story and a bunch of people hand you checks and like, you know, that's it, right? Um, Hill has said it really well, Techstars is a buffet, uh, you know, there's an inherent understanding and I think this is done really well given the programs I've been involved with. Techstars nailed it with the, we're going to put everything in front of you. We understand you have a business to run. Take the things that are valuable, you know, put somebody else and divide and conquer between founders to cover as much as you can. But at the end of the day, you won't be able to do everything and still run your business and we get that. Um, I think that was really important for me. But what I missed, what I missed was building relationships with investors you know, as we went through Mentor Madness and as we met all of these incredible people, and that's a part of the uh, facilitation that Techstars does phenomenally. Um, I did not keep on with the investors in the way I should have because in my head, we get to demo day, we tell this awesome story, we'd write checks, we'd go back to, you know, building an awesome business. Um, no, those are relationships that you have to build. And it was foolish of me, quite frankly, and, and to, to my MD um, and PM's credit, 
you know, they were like, hey, are you following up with those investors? And, you know, I wasn't. I wasn't doing my homework. Um, no, I, I, I can say I shifted that. And as we started going to FounderCon regularly, I've been every year, um, you know, Techstars, again, gives you a buffet. They curate investors and corporates. And what I will say is patience is maybe the name of the game on, on some of this network building. You know, we met PwC. Um, so we went through Barclays uh, end of 2016. I believe IoT started early 2017. Um, uh, PricewaterhouseCoopers was a sponsor of the IoT program the year after we finished Techstars. Um, we got connected to them and a year later, so a year after I finished Techstars, we got connected. A year after that, we got a POC done with uh, with PwC. Um, similarly, the first Techstars FounderCon I went to in 2016, I met the Chief Innovation Officer of MetLife, um, John. Um, literally two years later, we ended up getting a POC done with MetLife through a relationship that we had curated over the, the course of two years. Um, Goldman Sachs was the same way. I mean, the list goes on and, and it's funny, this is the first time I'm realizing that like, completely dropped the ball with the investor relationships that I, I should have been building as a founder. Um, I think we did really well with some of the corporate relationships that we built. Um, and ultimately we have pulled the plug on that specific company. Um, and that's, I suppose, an occupational hazard of the work we do. Um, but at the end of the day, I mean, I have some of the most incredible lifelong relationships still with the folks at PwC, still with the folks at MetLife. Um, you know, I look at companies on Jenny's behalf uh, as and when she needs me to. I mean, we've we have these connections and I'm on this call um, with, you know, a company that's no longer active um, and have moved on to other things that at some point will be valuable to the Techstars network. I think we all understand that natural kind of contract, if you will, the social contract. And that's that's important to me. Excellent. I'll add to that a little bit. Um, so I, to your point, Ace, I, I love how that you gave us examples of like how long it actually takes for when when you first meet to like when you actually get a POC done. And I mean, there's a whole nother video on this to kind of help you understand what that POC deal looks like and then like what that actually could mean and how long that can take with certain different companies. But um, I, I always relate this into um, like a real life form and it hits people a little bit harder. It's just like getting married to somebody. Like let that sink in a little <laughs> because it's, you, when you meet someone right away, you can't just push for, will you marry me? Like you have to get to know them, then you gotta meet their friends and then you gotta get their approval and then you gotta meet the parents and then you got to get their approval. There's a lot of steps and, you know, kind of how you get to the actual, you know, walking down the aisle type of a situation. And typically, like, it usually takes around two years to get that done. And so same thing there. It takes continual effort in you putting into this relationship and nurturing it, I think is the key word, to make sure that it gets to the right, uh, right place and kind of the right ending for you. So I just wanted to replay that in a different scenario for, for folks. And I'll, the, the last thing I'll say is that, um, you know, Techstars curates so many of those opportunities um, that that for me continues to be the value of this specific network. Um, you know, the give first ethos and being able to reach out to anybody at any time. You know, that that is true, I feel like, um, if you're part of the Techstars network, and you're trying to track down somebody who's also in the network, you can get a response, um, you know, and, and that's, that for me is real. You've got to capitalize on those opportunities and, and the patience that I think Esther just spoke to. Um, like, I think at the time we had gotten the past, fastest POC done with PwC and it took nine and a half months. Congratulations. Um, that, that was really the fast. fastest. <laughs> um, you know, and it, that was a series of dinners and calls and, you know, late night calls, et cetera. I mean, that that for me, uh, really, really critical. And, um, you know, sometimes it's not fun. The work that we do is not always fun, um, but it's the work. And if we do it well, we put ourselves in a really good place. So I would say, you know, we talk so much about passion in our companies. And um, while passion is important, it's drive and, and diligence and dedication that gets the work done. Um, the days that passion shows up at the same time, those are really, really good days. Uh, but I think when it comes to building and curating a network, it, it's got to be the drive and dedication um, that you just block and tackle. And I think Esther touched on that a little earlier really well also. So I want to look at that Esther Hill on A's. Uh, that is the conclusion.
and today uh, as insights, stories, and examples of how Techstars network uh, programming faculty. We have questions that we'll dig in before we come back to time. The question here is how tech tech to VC and find and connect with them. Uh, this one's pretty easy. You go on LinkedIn and you go to Virtual Tech Stars, then you go to Granularity, Industry, Virtual Capital, and Private Equity, and you'll see a ton of people uh, who are in. Uh, and if you need more help with that one, I'm happy to connect. Another question here on what opinions about how the new network connections are being by this COVID-19 situation. I will let that one be on the floor for a bit. Uh, who wants to jump on it? How is COVID-19 network today? Ramsey, maybe I can help out a little bit because you're breaking up. Um, yeah. I'll read through the questions from this point. So I think the last one that he touched Sorry. on, no, that's okay, uh, okay, was would love to hear opinions about how new network connections are being changed by this COVID-19 situation. Um, I can I can start with this off. Um, I've seen corporates, and I've seen actually founders, I reach out to them all the time, including our portfolio um, uh, our portfolio companies and I've seen that slow down just a little bit. I think a lot of folks are actually like focusing on their business continuity um, plans and strategies right now. And so um, just even like raising your hand to tech stars, uh, whoever that may be to your MD or your uh, your um, investment manager, if that applies to you and just saying that, hey, I'm, I'm still alive. I, I still need to you know, make the connections and be very specific on the types of connections that you want to make um, so that it's in, in maybe a touch affordable, maybe a touch of one pager. Um, I think the one thing that regardless of COVID situation or not, I think just when you are asking for a connection or when you want to make new connections, make it as easy for that person um, to kind of toss that into different people's worlds. Um, so I think I'll just kind of wrap it up there. Ace, Hilla, do you have any other um, thoughts yeah. here? Yeah, I'll uh, I'll jump in really quickly. I, I, Esther, I'll, I'll I'll maybe even um, make that last piece that you shared more tactical. Um, we talk about the forwardable email um, in TechStars all the time. You know, uh, everybody's running a mile a minute right now through COVID nineteen, and on top of that, we're working out of our basements, as you can see in my uh, in my case. Um, we've got kids and pets and spouses, you know, running around. Um, now, as as more so than any other time, we've got to facilitate people helping us. We've got to help people help us, right? And the forwardable email is a really good way to do that. The basic premise is, you know, you need to send a bundled templated email. So instead of reaching out to your MD or a mentor or any of us and saying, hey, can you connect me with Ramsey? Then I've got to go to Ramsey and I've got to go say, hey, will you take this connection? He'll say, what do they want? I'll say, I don't know. And then we've got to start back at start where I got to go back to you. But if you said, hey, I want to connect with Ramsey. I was on the AMA today. It was an incredible time. He mentioned a connection to so, so, and so. Do you mind making that connection to me? Then I can just bundle it up, forward it to Ramsey, right? Like just click forward in my email and say, hey, Ramsey, see below. There's a team that wants to chat with you. You cool with this intro, right? Like that makes my life easier. It makes your life easier. It makes Ramsey's life easier. And if the value is being created by you getting the connection you want, that's a really good way to do that. So I would say consider the forwardable email and just lower the friction of getting what you need from anybody in your network because that's, uh, that's really important. I love that tip. And I just want to add on that. I love everything that's being said here. It's like great tip, Ace. This Next is, this is it's, a uh, Hi, guys. I look forward to better understand how tech help helpers that aren't in the program. Uh, well, there's a lot of different ways that we help entrepreneurs that aren't in the program. One is through getting and, and supporting entrepreneurs through sessions like this, AMAs, webinars, offline events. Uh, but if there is help specifically on connectivity, ways to get into the program, or anything product related, reach out to me directly. Uh, there's other ways that we can help through Startup Weekend, through our, our partners, our affiliate networks, and so on and so forth. So we're happy to be helpful there if you reach out to me at randy.ismail at techstars.com. Uh, one last question before we let everybody go. Uh, how to make networking less random and more efficient for one's business or career goal? 
as now networking opportunities are everywhere and can take a lot of time. So how do you make it less random and more efficient? Any thoughts on that, Hilla, Ace, Esther? Yeah, I just, uh, yes, I think that this goes back to my last point. Am I breaking up as well? Yeah, it goes back to my last point. So can you all hear me? Great. I think this is a great opportunity for us to actually network and create like opportunities because people have a lot more time. And this connects with what Ace said. People like corporates and VCs and investors are all sitting at home with everybody around them and they're actually looking for something to do. And uh, the good news is I'm hearing from my portfolio and companies I deal with and invested in that a lot of uh, clients are reaching out to them now. A lot of investors are kind of trying to put together their pipelines. This is a great opportunity to actually reach out and accelerate everything that you're doing in terms of your pipeline and your networking. This is kind of why we're having this session. It's, this is not a normal time. This is a great time. This is a great time for us to actually leverage, create pipelines, portable emails, and just create everything from scratch. I'll, I'll add a little bit um, of color to um, what Hilla means. Um, I had a really awesome email come through this morning from a Techstars alumni that um, I have a relationship with. And he had messaged me and said, hey, um, and I'm going to use Ace as a, um, as, as a, as a stand-in person because I don't want to name the venture firm. But, I, but this founder messaged me and said, hey, um, Esther, I'm going to talk with Ace. And it's likely that we're going to be pitching our company to him um, the next week. Is it cool for you to reach out to Ace and kind of say some good words for me? So kind of understanding who is surrounding Ace, who is, um, you know, connected to Ace that can vouch for me character wise and for my company and kind of what we're doing and speak on my behalf. That's that's, you know, comes from a credible place. Um, and that, and, and I'm, I was happy to do it for that, you know, founder. But what I also was able to do is help him understand who is actually closer to that person outside of myself that is also in his network, and that I would be happy to make the introduction if he did wasn't in that person's network. So this is a good example of how I actually got from job to job. I never had to look for a job specifically because people were constantly recruiting based on the, the the types of asks that I was making. I was making these types of asks, um, you know, for, for little birdies to go and talk into their ears and say, Esther is awesome. Esther is great. Like, you should definitely hire her. Like, you're really stupid if you don't hire her. These types of little types of comments. Um, and if, you know, it comes from someone like Ramsey to Ace, because they're, you know, they, they've known each other for a really long time. They trust each other. Then it's like a no brainer. Things will just go differently for you in that meeting. Um, for whatever reason. So I, I would love to add that on top of everything that we had talked to today to kind of understand the peripheral um, and the luminaries of the folks that are around the person that you are trying to um, understand and you know get a, get a meeting with, have a conversation with and things like that. So I'll leave it there. I think Ace, you wanna jump in? <laughs> I see. Um, no, no, I'm good. I'm good. I think uh, I think you summed it up really nicely, um, and I think we're just about at time anyway, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Totally. And Ramsey, do you still need me to close, or are you good? Yeah, I think uh, just want to say thank you to everybody who joined us today. The 105 people, 104 people that are here: Ace from Virginia, Esther from Berlin, Hilla from Tel Aviv, and Franca. Thank you so much. Uh, Techos Network is at full play here. Have a good day, everybody. Thank you so Thanks. much for being here. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye.